What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard Varieties of Spice of Life. And hopefully, you can find some of that spice here. Now, this go around, be looking at uh, some 3D printed cars. I run across, uh, just kind of looking at, trying to take and find some new tech and things like that. I, I, I knew that people had taken and done 3D printed vehicles, but a lot of, you know, I, I know there's a couple people that have money that took and did 3D printed vehicles for their own pleasure or whatever they're like all right cool i want to take and build a car and this is the kind of design i want they put in the put it into the 3d printer and voila and then they took and specced it out how they wanted it uh these are built by some companies and this is the lm ollie it's a bus or a shuttle it's got a top speed of 25 miles an hour and a max range of 40 miles and it can carry up to 1800 pounds worth of cargo i guess passengers so this is the demo day. I said, I figure, we'll, hey, we'll take a look at it. I'm trying not to take and get any claims on here with all the music, so. Thank you. So many partners and friends, welcome to your stop on our 2018 tour, Ollie Demo Day. Ollie, tell me about robotic research. Robotic Research is known for providing robust autonomous mobility and ancillary technologies for the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security. Now, I do know that this is being used in Maryland and it's been it's being used in a couple places in Europe and there's a couple other city uh, a couple other cities, not cities, but a couple other um, companies in the U.S. that are using the, uh, the Ali for shuttles. Um, is using IBM Watson technology in it for the AI in it or the the autonomy autonomous driving. So, Ali, switch platforms. Switching to Watson. Ali, tell me about yourself. My concept was a code created through a challenge run in our online platform. Be nice seeing it'd be nice seeing a, a bigger scale application of this like seeing this as like uses for city buses and things of that nature now granted it's got a smaller passenger size however a lot of times you see that there's only five or six you know two or three people getting on a lot of times at bus stops anyways and if there's more than that you can always take an increase by one or two the amount of autonomous buses that are within your lineup instead of having you know one long behind bus you're taking a drop off pick up have one that's running maybe two or three minutes behind the other and have designated spots you know at the same designated bus stops taking that's pretty i, I like that that's pretty cool
I find that pretty freaking interesting. And yes, that that is this has been 3D printed, believe it or not. It's uh, made by Local Motors, and Local Motors also 3D printed a car called the Strati. So, but I found this a lot more interesting. Now, this next car is a Divergent Three uh, Blade 3D. This is also printed, uh, 3D printed. I don't know of any more than just one in existence. However, uh, it is using, it's not using electrical power, but it's using a mid-engine uh, Mitsubishi Evo motor. And it gets like 720 horsepower. And it's like really light, like less than 1,500 pounds or something like that. So it'll scat. Okay, I can turn off the volume. Yeah. Turn off the volume. It's 3D print. Oh my God, that's beautiful. I did see a picture of this and the lines on it. It reminds me of an old, uh, what it reminds me of taking a look at the front of this thing. It's like he took a, one of the futuristic looking Hot Wheels and actually made 3D printed a model of it. That definitely looks like a, <laughs> that looks like a Hot Wheels that's been made for real life, that's for sure. Look at one more video on it. Second video for the uh, Divergent Blade, uh, Blade 3D. There again with the music. I'd say it's a beautiful car. fact that you can 3d print a car these days that's it's absolutely insane i mean we all you know everybody you first hear about 3d print you know oh, that's pretty neat and you hear there you know people are printing all these different crazy things with them you see medically they're uh, trying to take and 3d print human organs and stuff like that I'm just waiting for the first, like, widely available, like, one of the big manufacturers to start 3D printing vehicles. This is the making of the EDAG Light Cocoon. I'm uh, just going to take a real quick look at this. This is another 3D printed vehicle. It'll be electrical, uh, 125 mile an hour top speed, uh, no estimated range or anything like that, but it's... 3D printed and it's backlit by LEDs. Uses a fabric over the top of the exoskeleton of it. It's a fabric instead of like sheet metal or, or anything like that. It's a fabric that is see through, but it is weatherproof and waterproof. So. See, my whole concern with stuff like this is the fact of uh, how strong is it? And if you get into an accident, how strong is this? With the Genesis sculpture, we have already demonstrated our ability to reduce the weight of structural components. And now we want to show that we can also reduce the weight of the exterior, surface parts and trim panels. And the question we asked was, how would nature do this? 
If we look at the leaves of a plant, we can see certain load-bearing structures, a network of veins covered by a skin. And why shouldn't this principle also be the solution for a car bonnet, for instance? The trick is that, by regarding the bonnet as a volume part instead of as a sheet metal part, we might be able to reduce the density of the material, removing everything not needed for dynamic and static load cases. What we would then end up with is a three-dimensional load-bearing skeleton that complies with all the static requirements imposed on a bonnet without a skin. This was topologically calculated. Pretty interesting the way they're going about this. I mean, I, anytime, of course, range. Anytime you're going to take a 3D uh, print a vehicle uh, as a concept vehicle, or even if you take and plan on releasing one for full production or anything like that, taking and doing the 3D printing route, I just find it interesting that that's where they would take and go to. That's that's what they would think of. Like I said, I most people think of 3D printing. Your first question is going to be exactly how strong is this thing going to be? You know, am I going to be protected in a wreck? But you also got to take and factor in they're also starting to 3D print houses basically now. It's just they're doing it with uh, concrete. Be kept out of the car, and we need a surface for its aerodynamics. So all we need to do is cover the load-bearing skeleton with the skin and in doing so have in fact transferred the design principle of the leaf to the bonnet. By today's standards, the use of a fabric would be the lightest alternative. There are fabrics that weigh less than 19 grams per square meter. To compare, standard copier paper weighs about 80 grams per square meter. This would make our skin four times lighter than paper. In our search for a weatherproof stretch fabric, we came across outdoor specialist Jack Walskin, and they immediately agreed to join us in our quest. Thank you, Jack Walskin. The fabric covering, of course, also helps us to visibly display the vehicle's central statement, because we can pass light through the fabric, which displays the bionic substructure and also enables us to apply lighting technology to brilliant effect when exhibiting the concept. The stretch quality of the material also makes it possible to follow the organic physical movement of a rear spoiler without the detraction of the joints seen in today's production models. It's actually pretty interesting. That's, that's pretty, it's pretty nifty that they're taking that approach. video basically a walk around of the edag like cocoon concept car it's pretty nifty how you can how it lights up and they're talking about the rgb lighting actually being used to communicate with other drivers that are on the road as if text wasn't distracting enough as you light it, how it just lifts up no brakes or anything like that whenever it does that I actually like that I, I find that pretty pretty nifty and there we go. That's basically a full walk around. So that's three different vehicles we've looked at so far. Um, this is just something I run across and I was like, man, this is just 
this is actually pretty freaking cool this is really freaking neat and we've got so much cutting edge, cutting edge technology that's going on right now 3d printing like i said there's so many things that they're doing with 3d printing it makes you wonder why has why somebody hasn't already tried to take and come out uh, on a mass scale a 3d printed vehicle uh it's seems like you could cut down on a lot of manufacturing time that way now, i don't know how expensive the resins and stuff like that are if you take and start adding like uh carbon fiber and things of that nature to take and add to the structural rigidity or anything like that don't know how much all that could cost so it could probably push the cost maybe a little bit more expensive but it just seems that this would be something somebody had already done all right this last vehicle we're going to take a look at is the lsev it's a joint product joint production vehicle between xev and polymaker now this vehicle is still under kickstarter so take that as you might just seems like it's something cool you could always take and go you know donate to kickstarter take them uh, become one of the pledgers and then take and pledge enough you take and get one of the first uh, production runs of it but it's an electric car 3d printed uh, 43 mile an hour top speed 90 mile range basically it's it'd be really good for urban commuting and stuff like that and i say er, like you have to be in the city and things of that nature that that would be th this seems like something that'd be really good for that My name is Shofen and I'm the co-founder of Polymaker. We are a company dedicated to developing new and functional materials for 3D printing. To me, XCV is the first real mass production uh, project using 3D printing. When I say real, of course there has been other companies using 3D printing for production. But nothing can really compare with XCV in terms of the scale, the size, and the intensity. However, if you think about the project from the first principles, everything fundamentally makes, is feasible and makes sense. So that's the beauty of it. Of course, there will be a lot of technological challenges that need to be solved and overcome. Um, but I firmly believe that uh, this is what's going to happen. We have the best team, best people who will solve those problems and challenges and make the project successful. Um, 3D printing in the beginning was only used for, for prototyping, for rapid prototyping. Uh, you know, they have, you know, they, there, there was... I don't know why it sounds like he's talking through a can, a tin can on a string, but it, that's exactly what it sounds like almost. Not that much required for, for materials, but as 3D printing becomes more and more a production tool. There, there has been a growing need for high performance materials like engineering plastics. So Polymaker was uh, founded back in 2012. So for the last six years, we have been working very hard um, on developing new high performance engineering materials for 3D printing. Okay, so he's talking a lot about the different things his company's looking at doing um taking let this go a, few, a minute or two longer or a minute or so longer take and finish it out less i less he doesn't talk normal i'd like to take and hear my, more about the vehicle personally uh there's not a whole lot on it though they're really it like i said there's a kickstarter thing there's a kickstarter site and i'll take and leave the link in the uh, description on that but It'd be interesting to see 43 mile an hour top speed that could get it to 50, even with a 90 mile range. That's something that I could take and use around the house, uh, going from my house to the local, to the Dollar General right up the road, or actually going to town town, taking, going to, going to town to uh, buy groceries. It's only a two-seater. I can always put my groceries on the floor beside me. It's a 15-minute ride. You know, do a 45-mile-an-hour top speed. You're just, there's 
elderly folks that drive 45 mile, miles an hour from where I live at to town, so <clears throat> fit right in. And around town, something like this, if you live in a uh, town, even a small town, let's see, speed limit's 40 miles an hour where I'm at. There's a lot of cities and uh, towns around uh, the U.S. and around the world, but uh, it's speed limits of like 35 and 40 miles an hour as well. Something like this, you could you could take and drive and take and do your errands for the day, get home, still have good battery life. If you need to, go out and, you know, take and go back out, pick up something that you might have forgotten for dinner or something like that, go back home, plug it in, and you, you're going to have, this would be like, a, it's like the perfect application for something like this. You have probably the most competitive cost structure. Uh, and finally, the technology is also very flexible, so you can very easily integrate the technology with the, uh, your existing manufacturing process. So uh, I believe in this particular case, I think uh, material extrusion-based 3D printing uh, is the best choice for the XCV project. Yeah, I, I think the XCV Polymaker collaboration and, and, and the success will certainly inspire more companies to adopt 3D printing in production, in final production. Um, I think it's very clear this is, a, this is an inevitable trend uh, of the industry. Um, I think, yes, uh, certainly we'll see that happening more and more in the future. I'd like to see it start happening. That'd be, I, like I said, you... there's people like me that are always going to take and live away from town in a little bit more rural area. Something like this wouldn't work for somebody whose nearest town is like 40 miles away from them or something like that. And yes, stuff like play, pe places like that do exist or that remote, like 40 miles. You might have like a little town or something like that nearest like actual city or whatever, 40 something miles. And I'm talking about when I say town, I mean like that's the barest use of that word where they have a, basically they have a post office, they have a stoplight, they might have a gas station or a Dollar General. That's considered a town in some places. So they might have some place like that in between where they live and an actual town, town, city type place where you've got grocery stores and things of that nature. It wouldn't work in that kind of, it, it wouldn't be so great, f you know, for that so much because you're not giving yourself a lot of leeway if for whatever reason you, you're you don't have as much charge as you think you do around cities somebody that's 10 15 minutes outside of town perfect perfect but even like especially like bigger cities you could use two-seater if they was to make a four-seater version of this it'd be great for places that have like the pov lanes and stuff like that so if you're taking have to go to work, you leave your home, pick up the two or three other people, you take and get on the interstate, drive for 10, 15 miles, take your exit, but in that 10, 15 miles, you're in the POV lane. I just, taxi services, things of that nature. I think it'd be awesome for that application. Take one more look. Turn the music off. Yeah, turn the music off. Apparently that's how they just how they designed it.
So it does have a steel frame. Okay, so just the... Okay. So you at least have a little bit of... Not a whole lot, but you still have a little bit of, like, actual metal. So... bad looking interiors or nothing like that. You know, it'd be the perfect little city cruiser. Definitely wouldn't have to worry about parallel parking with that. Great goodness. All right, so that's the LS EV. So let me know what you think. I mean, do you think this is something that, or an idea as far as 3D printing vehicles that could be viable for mass marketing? Um, I think. I honestly think stuff like this, the LSEV, would be that and the Ollie bus. Uh, especially if you take and add any kind of autonomous type technology to something like the LSEV. That'd be pretty, I think that'd be pretty pretty interesting. You could definitely, you're talking about robo taxi type stuff then. You've definitely got the perfect platform for it. Um, I'd like to take and see somebody produce a purchasable 3d printed vehicle that I could buy right now if I wanted to so actually I think I like this concept the best the prettiest was hands down the blade but this and the Ollie in my opinion I think are two of the neater two of the neater concepts that are out there the ollie already being a use in, in a couple different places this right here just as a as like an urban type as an urban type vehicle or somebody that's you know might live might only live 10 minutes or 15 minutes from town you know or about about 10 to, about 10 to 15 miles 20 miles at most from town something like this could work so that being said, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, and notification bell. Y'all have a lovely one. Peace.